Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk. So Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk is directed by Ang Lee and the film stars Joe Aldwin, this is his first film, Kristen Stewart, Chris Tucker, Garrett Hedlund, Vin Diesel, and Steve Martin. And Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk does deal with the story of this young, I believe, 19-year-old man named Billy Lynn. He comes home for a victory tour at a Dallas Cowboys football game after this big war in Iraq. But, you know, while they're up at the football game, Billy Lynn is having all of these flashbacks of what really happened in Iraq. So Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk was one of my most anticipated movies for the rest of the year. It was in my top five because the trailer for this film is not only one of the best trailers of this year, but it's one of the best trailers I've ever witnessed. That trailer blew me away. And Ang Lee is a very talented director, so I wanted to see what he could do to bring the story to life. The film just had all the ingredients to be this either good or great film. It had those ingredients, and now that I've seen Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk, my verdict on the film is that... <sighs> Wow, this was disappointing. However, yes, there are things I can definitely admire about Billy Lynn. Uh, definitely what I'll say about this film is the cinematography. The cinematography does look beautiful from beginning to end. I loved how the film was shot throughout, whether you're in the flashback scenes in Iraq or whether you're in the present time where Billy Lynn and the rest of the squad are at the football game. It looks really beautiful, honestly. Especially once, yes, you do get to the halftime walk. That looked very stunning. And Ang Lee did a really good job directing this film. He is just so good at really bringing you in this atmosphere. Like, especially when you go to the flashback moments when it cuts to them in Iraq. He really made you feel like you were there in Iraq with Billy Lynn and the rest of the men. Some of the writing in this film can be really well done. I would say the ones that I was really engaged by as far as dialogue goes are the moments between Billy Lynn and Vin Diesel's character and the scenes when Billy Lynn is talking to his older sister played by Kristen Stewart. I actually thought those scenes when he is having a chat with his sister. Those were very engaging scenes. And there were even some moments with Billy Lynn and Garrett Hedlund that I actually did really like. As far as performances go, I'll say most of the performances were actually really good. I'll start off with Joe Alwyn. This is his first film. This is his first role he's ever acted in. And I have to say, he did a really, really good job in this film. He really does have a bright future because the way he expresses his emotions is quite powerful. When you see his bloodshot eyes, when you see him actually crying so naturally, I can't help but credit this guy. Like, it takes a lot when an actor can just really feel lost in the role and just cry. Joe Alwyn just really captured this very broken guy because of what he saw in Iraq. Some of the things in Iraq are going to stick with him and it just brings back all of these flashbacks. Kristen Stewart isn't in this film too much as Billy Lynn's older sister, but I did really like her for what she was given. Kristen Kristen Stewart as of late has definitely been really, really impressing me. She's really good in Cafe Society earlier this year, and she was really good here in Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk. I really like Kristen Stewart. I really like Garrett Hedlund as the sergeant. I thought he was actually really funny. He was really good. And there were actually some nice little heartwarming moments. They weren't like anything too major, but there were like nice little hint of heartwarming moments between him and Billy Lynn that 
I actually did really like. And I'll definitely say whenever the film does cut to the flashbacks when they're in Iraq, I did find those to be very engaging moments, especially when you do get to the action, which this is not Hacksaw Ridge, by the way, where the second half of Hacksaw Ridge was nothing but a non-stop war action-packed film. You know, as far as the war sequences go, it's not like Hacksaw Ridge, but you know, there's a little bit of action in this film and for what it was given, and it was handled very well and it was very intense. It even has a few violent shots. And going back to the performances, I actually did think Vin Diesel did a very good job in his role. It was really refreshing to see Vin Diesel more toned down because we're used to seeing him more over the top, says these cheesy one-liners and these big popcorn action flicks. So it's nice to see him actually take a break from those over-the-top action movies and have a more toned down role where he feels more grounded in his role. Steve Martin, and it's so good to see him in a live action role. He had voice roles in Home and I believe Love the Coopers last year, but you don't really physically see Steve Martin. In fact, you haven't even physically seen Steve Martin since the big year which was five years ago, wow. But yeah, nice to see Steve Martin physically in a movie again. And I thought for what he had, he actually did a very good job with his role. And the film does do a very interesting job of giving you a little insight on how some people can view the military and, you know, how the military can be treated quite poorly uh, when it comes to some people out there. So I thought that was actually very interesting of the film to do. But unfortunately, Billy Lynn's long halftime walk does suffer from a very uneven script. This movie is quite messy to be perfectly honest. This film goes all over the place. The film does feel rushed and the film doesn't really know what to really focus on. Does it want to focus more on the Iraq flashbacks? Does it want to focus more on Billy and Steve Martin? And then there's also this little romance subplot with Billy Lynn and this cheerleader who don't have very good chemistry. She, I didn't think, acted that good. She was actually very poor when it came to her performance and I did not believe in these two's a chemistry whatsoever. It came off as so forced, so bland. Some of the dialogue in this film really was not written very well. It was written very poorly. And I was quite surprised because this is an Ang Lee film and Ang Lee is known for having very good dialogue in his movies, but I have no idea what happened here with Billy Lynn. Some of the dialogue really did not come together very well in my opinion. Also, while I did actually really enjoy the flashback scenes when Billy and the others are in Iraq, I actually did feel like by the time the film ended, I was expecting more because I, I thought there was going to be more to what they were going to show with what happened in Iraq, but I felt like walking out, I wasn't really given all that much. I felt like they didn't really go as deep into those Iraq moments as much as they could have. And that's the thing, this film lacks a lot of depth to be honest. Like you would think there would be plenty of depth to go on, but there isn't really much that goes along with it. And the same thing definitely goes with Billy's family. You know, you see Billy's mother, a couple of others, and then you don't really see them. Um, the only family member of Billy's that you see for the rest of the movie is just here and there, Chris and Stuart, and that's really about it. So they don't really fill you much info when it comes to Billy's family background. And then Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker's good in this film, but poor, poor him was absolutely wasted in this film. His role, 95% of it is just him talking on a phone to set up some kind of movie deal. That's it. He didn't add anything to the story. He didn't add any purpose. That's all Chris Tucker did, and that's a damn shame because Chris Tucker is a very talented guy, and he doesn't make a lot of movies, so when you do see Chris Tucker in a movie, it's very refreshing, but unfortunately, he didn't really have anything to do. And Steve Martin, although I really like Steve Martin, he was really good, 
I just didn't find his character, honestly, to be that interesting. And anytime you get to Steve Martin, I didn't really care too much for that, to be honest. And then this film isn't exactly very well paced. As I said, this film is honestly very uneven with its structure, but it's also really boring in some moments because some moments of the film I actually found myself so bored watching that I actually said, can we just get back to the flashback scenes in Iraq? Because like I said, I found those to be more compelling than some of the actual present scenes. Some of the present scenes, don't get me wrong, those are really good. I really did like some of it, but the other part of it wasn't really all that interesting. I just found it to be filler. I didn't think it was really adding anything to the storyline. And honestly, you guys, Billy Lynn's long halftime walk, I came out disappointed. It is quite messy. It gets really dull in some moments. And the movie never really knows what they want their main focus to be. It is so all over the place in my opinion. The movie just never quite delivers. It's not as good as I think think the movie thinks it is. Like, I'm pretty sure Ang Lee and the cast thought they had a good movie, but, you know, seeing the movie, it just didn't come together as well as it could have, personally. I'm gonna give Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk two and a half out of four stars. I do admire Ang Lee and the cast, but I really was disappointed with Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk. I expected so much more. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Billy Lynn's long halftime walk. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!